Hey, what's up guys? It's Coach Ben and welcome to episode one of my Q&A. Now, every week, I'd say going forward, I'm going to have one video that's like this where I'm going to respond to two questions. So here's how I handle all the questions that come into me. If you are on my newsletter, that's showing me that you're a serious coach. So if you are not on that yet, um, go ahead and get on that. And that's how you can communicate with me pretty much on a daily basis. Here's where I'm answering a lot of questions that coaches have. So if you are on my newsletter, I take the top two or top three questions that I know are being asked all the time, and I'm gonna be making a video like this to go into way more depth. Now I'm gonna pull up a few of the questions that I've gotten. Um, a lot of the questions I see recently are about how to structure the actual business. And that's the whole point of this channel. Um, and so the best resource I can give you right now, if you need, you know, from A to Z, all the steps you need to do, go check out my book. That's the quickest way I can help you uh, going forward with your academy is going to grab that book. It's going to be in the link in the description. Um, but here are some more technical questions um, about the actual training. So here's one right here. This is from Shay Haddo. Actually, Shay, you and I have been on the phone. We've talked a few times before. Um, but you asked me, how can I get all my players to train at more of a central location instead of traveling all over for sessions? Now, I think this is a great question because this is something I struggle with, especially at the beginning. I used to drive all over my city to go train players and I would accommodate them. I would go to people's houses to train. I would train out of people's backyards. Uh, I would drive 30 minutes to go train at a, a high school that was really far away. And I did everything to accommodate all the players I was training, all the clients, because I thought in my head that I had to go to them. And at the beginning, I think I needed to do that. I think I had to do that to get my name out there so I could grow my client base and all that's great. But over time, I started to realize, man, I am wasting so much money on gas right now and I'm wasting so much time. And the way I like to teach all of the trainers who are in my mastermind or those who go through my four-week course, it's all the same. I want you to be efficient with your time. I want you to be a machine out there. This way, when you go out to one location, everybody's coming to train you. So how do you do that? I think it's a great question. This comes down to your mentality and your mindset on how you want to operate things. Most trainers out there are not going to do it the way I do it, and that's fine. But if you want to train at one location, that needs to be part of your terms, that this is the place you're training at. And whether or not someone's going to drive five minutes or three hours to come train with you, that's where they're training. They're coming to your location. This does not mean that you need to have a, a facility that you're training at. And I, I know there's a big misconception. A lot of times... Coaches ask me when they when they're starting their academy, they're like, hey, like, you know, do you have a facility there? And no, like I just train out of local parks that are free. So there's zero overhead. But I have a specific place that players and families come to meet with me. They know that I'm not going to go anywhere else. And this way I can literally set my schedule up to where I am training between the hours of like three and six p.m. and at three o'clock, at four o'clock, at five o'clock, I have all of my sessions at one spot rather than the old days of me driving back and forth and maybe doing two sessions in three hours and me spending a lot of money on gas and me not having a set location. That's how it was for me back in the day. Now it's very structured. Players come to one spot that I'm out and I don't go anywhere else. Um, I don't do any training at any other locations. It's at one spot and I know at that point if someone's committed enough, they're going to meet me there. And a lot of parents, honestly, do not want to drive more than 10 to 15 minutes unless they know it's a great investment for their child. And this is why you have to be very confident over the phone, confident with parents, explaining to them why you have one location and why you're not going to travel anywhere else. Because a lot of people want the easy way out. They want you to travel to them so they don't have to commit to anything. And that's how it was for me at the beginning. And I hope that helps you, Shay. I know uh, we've talked a few times, but I think this is gonna be very critical for you moving forward because if you are too spread out, if you have one location over here, one location over here, it's gonna be impossible for you in the long term 
to build out consistent days of training at those spots because you're going to be going to too many places. I think it's smarter and it's going to be more efficient for your time if you just have one dedicated spot where players come to you. So this is going to come down to confidence and communication when you're talking to parents. And I think too, if you have that on your website, that you have one location, um, but while you're on the phone, while you have your sales calls with parents, you need to be very clear with them that, hey, this is where we train. This is where all of my players are coming to right now. And this is where you guys are gonna be coming. So I hope that helps. Um, and if it did, or if it did not, uh, email me again and I'll shoot another video. Um, and so the next question I got here, uh, let me pull this up really fast. This is from Tegan, Tegan Waddingham. And Tegan said, hey coach, do we have to have insurance to, to train players? A lot of fields and schools won't let me train players because of insurance. Do I need insurance? So this is something that also I go into a lot of depth in my book called the Startup Soccer Academy. So if you need actual help with that, awesome. Go go check that book out. But I will answer the question now. And the answer is yes. If you don't have insurance, then let's say I was training at a private school. After school, um, I came in, I started using their field, and a kid that goes to that school broke their arm or they twisted their ankle really bad and they had to go to, to the emergency room. That would fall on me. And if I don't have insurance, then at the end of the day, I will be screwed on that. Um, and the family could sue me. The school could sue me. And you don't want to be putting yourself in any dicey situations. So yes, you do need insurance. You need a very specific type of insurance. Um, in order to do that at whatever school or organization you're working with. And the easiest way to find out what you need is by simply talking to them and asking what is the type of insurance you need. But if you are not covered, if you go to schools or even if you go to a park, um, a park that I go to and you know players get hurt, then that's your fault. And if you don't have insurance, you're not covered. So you need to have insurance. Yes, that is the, the answer to your question. Because a lot of fields or schools will not allow anybody to train there unless you have that. And that's one of my golden rules with trainers. I don't want you to go out and train players with having the thought in your head that, oh, crap, I don't have insurance. So maybe we can't tackle today or, or I can't play aggressive with the players or players can't be aggressive with, with each other. You don't need to go have that mindset. You need to know that, all right, everything's good. Um, not only do I have insurance, but I have a payment system set up. I have all my marketing set up. Everything is set up to where you are con concentrating on the session when you're at the session. Like That's the primary focus. And if you have all these other outside negative things that go on in your mind that are making this harder for you, then that's going to make the sessions worse. And that's going to decrease the quality of your training. But if you have everything set up, this is why... I've created all my resources is for you to simply copy and paste, you know, the same systems I have, then you can enjoy the training and not have to worry about the insurance stuff or the business stuff. Um, and that's where I come into place. That's where I help out. So I hope that answered your question, Tegan. I know we have one more question here. Uh, let's see here. Tegan, you already asked that one. Um, Hold on with me just two seconds. Okay, cool. This is from Jaime Garcia. And I think this is a, another great question that gets really overlooked from trainers and not just trainers, but people who start businesses, period. Um, Jaime's question was, um, he understands the different uh, types of businesses to start. So there's a sole proprietorship, there's an LLC, S-Corp or a nonprofit. Um, he asked me, what is the best case scenario to start? Which one should you pick? And for me, this is all dependent on two things, where you live. So where you live is going to determine, you know, what tax advantages you, you have. Like if I lived in California, um, I could not have the same um, structure with my business that I have here in Texas because they have state income tax. Um, so I would have to have different paperwork. And so this comes down to where you live, number one. Um, that's going to also determine 
you know, how much money you pay in taxes. So setting up your business the proper way, the smart way, um, and knowing that you have either a sole proprietorship, LLC, S Corp, uh, or nonprofit, that comes down to you talking to someone that's in your town that is running a business and specifically a sports business. I would not want you to get advice from someone who's not doing anything else because they have been doing something that basically is what you want to do in a different sport. And I would follow someone else's advice. And I'm talking about following someone's advice that's been doing this for years, not someone who's been doing this for two months. This is why I feel very confident when I help trainers with basically anything else other than that. Um, I feel very confident helping anybody because I've already gone through all the mistakes in soccer specifically. And I know I can help other trainers in other sports, but soccer is my sweet spot. I know that I can help any trainer out there with their business, but this specifically what I would do is I would talk to someone who's within sports, within your city or the city that you want to start. This way, there's zero confusion on that because that is a step you have to take in order to receive online payments. The way that I teach that's in our programs, you have to have that set up. If you don't have that set up, you technically don't have a business and officially there's nothing registered. So that's what most trainers do. They try to do this the cheap way, the easy way, where they they just try to use PayPal um, and there's no business set up. Um, when you do that, you will run into the, the problems that I talked about earlier. If you don't have an LLC or the, the right business structure, then you won't get paid online. Um, people are not going to take you as serious as well. So this is something that's really, really important. Um, so the second, I, I think the second piece to answer your question is, not only do you want to talk to someone who is within that, uh, within a business that's within sports, um, not only that, but I would also talk to a CPA. You need to talk to someone that legally understands the concept of your business. And this way you can find all of the loopholes with taxes. And I know I've created another video about this. It's not the most appealing thing to talk about, but if you understand that you can write things off within your business. If you have your business set up legally, you can do that. If you don't, then you cannot do that. Um, this way, when you talk to a CPA, they will be able to walk through the little steps that you can take um, based on where you live. This is why I live in Texas. Our rules here are way different than everywhere else. So I can't you know, tell you exactly what you need to do whatever city you're in. This is why I would go talk to somebody else um, that can really answer that question in depth. But I hope this helped out. You do need to have that covered. If you don't have that covered, uh, you're not gonna be able to do this. Um, and let's see here, I think I had one more question. Um, this is from Josh. And I know this is a longer video, but thanks for sticking around. Um, I'm gonna do this um, just whenever I know I have free time, probably once a week. Uh, but this is from Josh, he says, hey coach, how do I grow my program through a referral program? And this, I think, is a very common question. Um, and I know I go through this a, a very in-depth in my four-week program that's very popular now. Uh, there's a lot of trainers who are in that. Um, this is like basically copying and pasting my business into your business. If you're interested in private training, group training, camps, clinics, if you want to do any of that, at a high level and you want to do it full time, go check that out. It's in the link in the description, but I'm going to give you my answer here. Um, and I, cause I think it's important that I, that I answer it. When you think about a referral program, it needs to be something that's very simple for parents to understand, because remember you are training players, but there's another layer to that. You have to have a good communication and good relationship with parents. If you don't have a good relationship with parents, you will never be able to build out a referral program because the odds of you telling players at the session, hey, bring your friends, they're, they're not gonna do that. Um, you need to talk to the parents and maintain a very solid relationship with the parents, with every single one of the parents who's in your academy. I think in my opinion, they were equally as important as the players that you train. So if you don't have a good relationship with them, what I'm about to show you is not gonna work. So you need to have something simple, number one. And if I was you, I would do this to where if you're doing group training, private training, camps, clinics, it's pretty much all the same. You want to give something away 
to whoever's referring players in in exchange for them bringing someone into your program. And they need to bring someone into your program that is paying, not someone who's coming to check out a free trial. So you need to have the exchange between a client who you're currently working with, their parents are going to recommend or refer other families into your program and all that's great. And in exchange, you're going to give something away for free. So that could be a free session. That could be a free month of training. That could be a free camp, a free clinic. I mean, you can be as creative as you want, but it needs to be set up to where it's simple. And I see so many people, they overcomplicate this. They, they tell parents, if you re, you know refer one player in, you're going to get two free months of training. Like You, you can't give that much away for free. Um, you need to have it set up to where it's structured for you and it's a win-win for the parents because all parents out there are going to want to help you, especially if you have a good relationship with them and their son or daughter. And this is the thing. I know for, for myself, once I found the right people to work with in my academy, I knew that if I built a good relationship with the parents and I'm not faking it, like this is a genuine, real thing. I'm going to watch kids play. Um, I go meet with parents at Starbucks. I talk to them all the time over the phone. I do the things that most people don't want to do. Once I did that, the referral program is very simple. And I know right now, based on what I just shared with you, if I use that, um, if I met 10 kids that I started training right now, I could quadruple my program in the next two weeks by simply just having that set up. So I think that's a very valuable tip that's going to help you um, but I hope that answered your questions. If you have any questions on that, shoot me another email and I'll go into more depth. So that's it for today's video, guys. I know this is probably the longest video uh, that we have on YouTube so far. Um, I will be posting videos like this periodically. So if you have more questions, I want you to reach out to me. So if you're on my newsletter, go ahead and you have my email there. Go ahead and email me whenever you want. Um, and I'm going to collect the top questions to answer on here. And if you want to start your soccer academy the right way and go into way more depth than what I just talked about, and you really want things to be set up within the next day or so, go check my book out called The Startup Soccer Academy. There's going to be a link in the description below that's going to take you to that page where you can read more about what's in the book. That book has now been sold to hundreds of trainers worldwide, and a lot of these trainers are very successful now, and that has been the foundation to their success. And I don't say that to brag. I say that because I know it's helping. And I wish that's something I had at the beginning when I started training players. There was no information like that. I had to learn through trial and error to become successful with my academy. And that's why I wrote the book. I don't want you to stumble your way through training players. I want this to be something that's very successful for you. And that book is a fantastic resource for you. And you can go check that out right now. So that's it for the video, guys. Thanks again for watching. And I'll catch you next time.